All right. So here we have our new plane that we just created. And we're going to put the ocean bump map, bump map on that. And to do that, I'm going to use an object. We're going to introduce uh, just a plane axis empty. Um, grab it along the z-axis and then move it along the y-axis. Just let's see. Um, there and I happen to know that this plane axis empty is two meters apart or two meters from side to side so well, let's get rid of something I want to get there we go so that we can see um, I, all I did was just click down wait where did I click yeah um, click down on this thing this button here and and get rid of it so um, I'm going to scale that by 50 and where that ends up is something that is 100 meters across let's look at that one two three four five to the center yep 100 meters across and we're going to use that um, to project our uh, displacement along this this plane so anyway I'm gonna move it up to where it's actually sort of in all all in the plane and then um, let's add some modifiers let's let's start making our material here our, our, our displacement so uh, the first thing is actually I'm just gonna hit control 2 um, and bring in the subsurf at two levels and then after that let's bring in the displace modifier and um, add an Let's see here. Add a new texture and open and <laughs> shash ocean. I guess I misspelled that. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to bring in this as my displacement map. These are the displacement maps that are created by um, the ocean modifier, and and they look completely different. And and the reason is, I assume, because the ocean modifier comes from Houdini and Houdini does things a little bit differently and the blender folks uh, never really felt the need to change that and, and that's fine we're gonna try to work with these um, open image and look at that we have displacement it looks kinda strange right now um, let's go down and to image mapping let's see here what am I, oh, I know. I'm. Uh, here's what I'm missing. I want it. Let's see. This texture to be mapped by the, an object. I want it to be mapped by the empty that we had just introduced. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. Okay. So now you can see some deformation, but not much. Let's go back and maybe increase the subdivisions a little bit or maybe increase the strength there we go increase the strength now this is kind of important to notice look there is there are blank spots first of all we have the tiling image it looks like um, you know, kind of a zigzag pattern and we have empty spots in here where nothing's going on that's interesting to me while I'm here, let's uh, let's go to um, smooth shading. All right. So there's a reason behind the empty spots, and and I've done some experiments um, to explain what is going on here with this texture, with this uh, displacement texture. And what I have found is that you've got you've still got um, red green and blue channels but they are all um, uh, well okay so you've still got the red green and blue channels it's like I guess a normal map um, but we're displacing along three different axis axes and then the green is just because of what I've experimented with trying to get this to look um, you know like a real ocean the, the green is the x-axis the red is the I'm sorry the green is the z-axis the red is the x-axis and the blue is the y-axis so we're gonna get rid of 
the red and the blue and to do that this is the coolest thing ever if we go to colors we can just type in zero on the red RGB multiply we can do zero on the blue and all we have left is our z-axis and that's what I'm really what I'm looking for I know that there's a lot of information we're losing with the the um, the red and the blue but we don't really need that we're just going to use the green for the z um, it, just to make things simpler for what we're doing later okay now that black believe it or not isn't really black that's actually clamped material there there are negative values in here so if we, if we if we hit clamp it clamps all the values between 0 and 1 typically i think i think that's how it works um and if we if we uncheck the clamp all of a sudden look at that check it back all of this stuff is less than 0 or negative numbers and then there it is i'm going to go back to my mid level and type in zero just to bring that up um, you know alright there's our there is our displacement now I'm gonna limit that um, I'm gonna come down here where it says image mapping and it says repeat and I'm gonna go ahead and put clip and notice look at that it's right over or right under our empty which is 100 meters across pretty cool so that's this is exactly kind of the scale that we were thinking it should be um, is, is sort of what we planned for for uh, when we ran the simulation 100 meters okay so now let's uh, let's have a look and see what we have here I don't have a material on it just yet. Yeah, eh, not <laughs> not too good. Um, let's bring over our material, our ocean material. We're going to change a few things. Let's see what it looks like now. Well, you know, I mean, that's pretty good, but we don't have any foam. We don't have any normals. And the foam to get that mapped onto here let's hit uh, let's see control T if you happen to have your Greg Zoll um, node wrangler and we're going to connect up the object and the object that we will use is the empty and then I'm going to come over here just so that we can see where we're at and I'm going to hit clip notice this is the wrong size and I, again, I've done a lot of experimenting, and all we need to do is fix the scale. Um, you know, this little trick here where I drag down and then I'll set a number. All you do is you click on it, drag it down as, as many as you need, and then type in your number, 0.5. Boom. Now we have foam, but it's still in the wrong place. So over here, location, 0.5. We don't need to change the Z location and there we go it's all in the right spot if you look at it you can kind of see that this is in the high the high points and as a matter of fact let's bring those up just a little bit just to see a little bit of that detail yeah it's all in the right spot if I wanted to I could actually sort of bring the, all of those out yeah I mean it's it's all sort of on the crests so that's how we test for for things um, now I'd like to sort of use this same um, node mapping for the normals so I'm going to bring I guess these two nodes down and put this into the normals and let's see what happens very cool alright so we have normals 
um, again, just as a test, or just to make sure we're in the right place, I'm going to hit, oh gosh, what did I, oh, uh, uh, oh, there we go, clip. And if you notice, there's no normals outside the box, but inside we can see our bumps. And if we were to do this, if we were to hit, uh, select this node and hit M for mute, those disappear. And they're very subtle, even even so. Um, oh, something else to notice. Okay, so the reason I did things the way I did, um, let's uh, tab out or uh, hit Shift Z in in Blender. And um, I'm going to come over here and hit Simple because I like having the sharp corners. The reason we did things the way that we did in creating this this uh, this plane is because we need more detail close to the camera and much less detail far away from the camera. We still need this plane. Um, you know, there's other ways to do to sort of make a plane and then deform it, but this is sort of the way we have to do it to um, so that I can use this to blend with the flip sim, with the flip simulator. So anyway that's uh, to bring out a little bit more detail in what we're seeing I'm gonna come closer to the camera and I could be doing this with less subdivisions of course oh, what am I doing um oh well okay hang on here I'm gonna do something else let's see here um, go to zero subdivisions here. I guess I could just turn it off. Let's go back to five and turn this off. And I'm going to tab into my plane and I'm going to get rid of some of these unneeded. So, okay, what I just did was uh, right click here. You can do it twice and have the full circumference or the full outline. Um, and you do it again and it's just from corner to corner. Now I'm going to hit control and plus and a, a many many times and get rid of um, control minus to get to sort of adjust backwards I'm gonna get rid of this many vertices X okay so there <laughs> all right so I'm not too worried um, about not you know about not being able to see this part um, oh gosh this whole thing hang on here Set, reset the mid-level again. No, that actually sets it down. I'm going to set it at zero again. All right. Just so we have more detail and we can see our wave patterns. Yeah. There we go. Very nice. Um, also, I'd like to check something with this camera. Yeah, I've got clipping here set at 100. Let's do the 10,000 again on the camera. And there you go. You actually see some appearance, although quite a bit of that's hidden by the waves. So we may not have the texturing or the, the I'm sorry, the tiling problem um, that we're, we're still going to work with it to sort of get rid of that tiling. If I actually, if I go back down to make these waves a little calmer. Oh, where am I? Um, here we go. If I go down and make these waves a little bit calmer, see what happens. Yeah, there we have some very nice waves. It's not it's not too rough, but we still see the rest of this, and we may see some tiling. So we're going to take care of that um, <laughs> probably in the next video. So that's the end of this video. Um, you know, we still have. Oh, also something I've noticed with the the foam. It always gets to be more as we go further. And so I, well, all I did here was type in frame 10, and there we go. We have lots of foam. It looks nice. It's not too much, I don't think. So, all right. Uh, that's the end of this video. We'll see you in the next one.